Welcome to Clonakilty in West Cork, an area famous for its arts and food. It's a vibrant, colourful coastal town which sits in the northern end of Clonakilty Bay. This is Emmet Square, a Georgian square built between 1785 and 1810 for the wealthy merchants of the growing and prosperous town. Revolutionary leader Michael Collins was born just outside Clonakilty and lived for a while in the square. He is celebrated in the museum here and he's commemorated with a statue. There are plenty of good reasons to visit Clonakilty, but I'm here for the food and I'm looking forward to discovering why it's such a renowned food destination. Perhaps the food most associated with Clonakilty is Clonakilty black pudding. And the story began in the 1880s when Philip Harrington opened a butcher shop here on Sovereign Street, which is now Pier Street in Clonakilty. Today, it's much more than a butcher shop. Just behind me here is the fresh meat counter, where in the fridge there, the dry age, all their own meat. It's changed every day, and there's an amazing selection of raw meat offerings. Whereas over here behind me is their deli counter. So they have beautiful salads here. You can get a cup of coffee, fresh rotisserie chicken every day, and then their gastro meals. Huge amount of selection here and innovation, which is fantastic. But what this shop is most famous for is Clonakilty Black Pudding. It's become so successful that production facilities have been built just outside the town, where up to 25 tonnes of pudding are produced every week. There's even a visitor centre on the site. Claire, it's great to see you again, and it was great to see the butcher shop where it all began. The Black Puddings was in the butcher shop since the 1880s, and the butcher shop was in the Harrington family, and um, it was made exclusively there. And then in 1976, uh, my late husband Edward bought the butcher shop, and with it came the, spi the secret spice mix um, for the black pudding. Now we're surrounded by beautiful dishes, so tell me what we're looking at here. What's this one here? That is the um, breakfast muffin, mm -hmm. and that is your taste of black pudding in, in, in a muffin, and the Very pizza. Good is um, mozzarella cheese, and then the tart is goat cheese, roasted beetroot, and black pudding. And you're gonna cook it And I'm going to now. cook another one. And, and I'm what going are to, you gonna cook for I'm me? going to make potato cakes. There are potato, um, chorizo and black pudding potato cakes. Gorgeous. Yeah, so you're gonna slice the chorizo? I'm going to, yes. And so that's obviously a local chorizo that you're using. It is, it? yes, that's gooby oh, down, down, yeah, down there in skull. So you're just warming that through I'm there, I'm just Claire. warming that through, yeah. When you heat up the chorizo, the, the oils and that oh, yeah. come out. We have some um, scallions okay. here. So you've just chopped a couple of spring just, onions? Yep, two spring onions. Or scallions, as you call them. Scallions, yeah. yeah. So I'll mix Good. this through for you, okay. I'll mix this. So it's just potatoes, you've added no milk, no butter, nothing like that. Uh, a small That's bit of butter. Ah, always a, always a bit of butter. It. So you've just lightly warmed them yes, up. Warm them up. And now this is our black pudding. And, uh, so minus okay. it in your black pudding, the texture, it's the pinhead oatmeal, is it? Yes, it's onions, pinhead oatmeal, um, beef meat. Okay. So will we um, yeah, add an egg now yeah, to... Yeah, right, my hands dirty. I'll yeah, be, yeah, you might as well. I'll be your so chef. you finish, yes. So we're looking for quite a wet texture, is that right? Like yes, that? it is, yeah. With the chorizo and the mm -hmm. pudding. Okay. We're just going to form these now. You just shape them into your hand? Yeah. Lovely. I think they're nice, they're a bit more irregular. Okay. Yeah. You're tossing just some T regular tossing, flour? Yeah, just Gorgeous. ordinary flour. So you're just really warming that through? Yes. Because the black pudding's cooked, isn't it, in the white? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is everything is cooked in it. Lovely. And uh, to just heat it right right through. And a lovely idea, you used the same oil that you had the chorizo in. Oh, yes, mm. yes, because you could you could see by the uh, by the pan that there was oil came out yeah. of the chorizo. Yeah, beautiful. So at the same time now, I just cook a few of these. Yeah. And, and by heating and them, you'll soften them too, once yes, in the centre. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think these are just about ready. They look if you gorgeous. want to get that batter yeah, there. I will. Look at the texture. Now you can rearrange. No, no. The little parcel here. Ah, oh, the smell of that. It's lovely. There we go. Wow. Does that Can't look? wait to taste this. It looks amazing. I ah. love the crispness of the black pudding, the chorizo, and everything is mixed in here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be delicious. I love the way that we specs the black pudding there. Mm. Not beautiful. No. Very good. happy. Good. Very I good. love that lovely buttery mashed potato. Mm. Of course, the black pudding it and the chorizo gives lovely, lovely. kind of smoky it's flavour. Flavor. So it does. Yes, yes, yeah. Colette, it's so good to see you again and keep up the wonderful work. You're just Thank you. you're an Thank inspiration. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. An Sugan is a renowned seafood restaurant in Clonakilty, run by the O'Crowley family since 1978. The distinctive sign was designed by Kevin O'Crowley, 
and local sign writer Tomás Topair. Tomás is a well-known sign writer in Clonakilty. He also designed the logo for Clonakilty Black Pudding. Today we're going to make a crab creme brulee using local crab which we handpick ourselves. So this is the crab here that yep, you've this is the cooked. crab here that we've already cooked and we're ready to go with. Gorgeous. So we're starting here with one full egg and an egg yolk and then we're going to add our cream. This is it here? Yep, this is our yeah. cream. Thanks. We're adding all here. that in? Yeah, we're adding okay. all that in. Thank you so much. Lovely. Okay, and then I'm going to take some nan plow off yeah. you. So but is this that's the perfect. Seasoning? Yes, and we're not going to use salt because okay. that, we don't need it after using that. And then we're going to just add in all our other ingredients here. So we have pickled ginger. Look at that. And we have some you garlic. That really fine. Finely, yeah. Super. So coriander. Mm-hmm. And parmesan. Gorgeous. And this is your crab. Can I have a look and at crab? this? Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Look at the lovely big chunks. It's beautiful. Of it. That's just beautiful. It is, isn't oh it? Yeah. God. And a little pinch of nutmeg okay. to finish. Wow, okay. a little bit of spice in there. Yeah. And whisk it all up. Isn't that simple now? Very simple. Very one egg, easy one to egg, make. yolk, yeah. cream. And it's all about the quality of the ingredients. Yeah, of course the quality it is. of the crab. You know that's wow. going to come through in the end. So we're going to cook this in a bain marie in a conventional oven at 160 for 15 minutes. And then because it's a bain marie, we just put mm -hmm. hot water Excellent. in. So that's kind of just to protect the custard, yeah, isn't so, it? Yeah, so yeah, not cracking or anything like that. Lovely. Now, I'll pop that in the no. oven for you. Now, here we go. So here's when you've done already. We've got it here with a nice yeast bread and some nasturtium butter. So how should I eat this? Put this on top? Yeah, and put it on the bread. I'm going to spread it over. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Richness. Can I go? Yeah. Oh, my God. Just beautiful. Good. I can really get the nutmeg. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah, mm. yeah. And the and ginger. The ginger lifts the it. The ginger, that's it. Wow. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Ah, gorgeous. Yeah. Mm. So that's one dish. That's one dish. What's the next thing you're going to do? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do Sally Barnes smoked haddock. So what are you going to do with this now? So we're going to poach this. Mm -hmm. So we have a mixture, half milk, half yeah. water here. Okay. It's a bit warm. We're going to add some peppercorns. Yes. And some bay leaf. So you're over your aromatics. Thyme. Oh, thyme. That's yeah. a nice one. Oh. And we're going to put the fish. Okay. Thank you very much. Sarah. So will this be pin boned or not? Yes, that's okay. I checked it all. It's all pin boned, mm -hmm. but you know, always check it just in case. Oh. We're just going to put it on a low heat. Okay. And how long would you cook that for? An I hour, am actually? going to do that really for six minutes, six maybe, minutes. Okay. you know, six to ten. And it's cured fish anyway. Yeah. So we're just sort of warming it. Yeah, yeah. It the cooking process has started already. Yeah. So with that? So with that, we're going to serve it on a bed of Kulkanen. Mm -hmm. So our Kulkanen will be mashed potatoes with uh, York cabbage, some spring onion, and just some herbs through it as well. Sounds delicious. And lots of butter, Gorgeous. which is the key to it all. the butter. So in here in Evan now, we have the shallots, the white wine and the white wine vinegar, and we have it nearly reduced. Mm -hmm. So then what we're going to add in, and we're going to reduce it a little more, is we're going to add in some of this cooking stock from the haddock with some cream in it, okay? Gorgeous. So half okay. and half, and we're going to put that in there, and we're going to let it reduce down on a gentle heat. Okay, so that's the sauce reduced now. Well, it's so well reduced. Yeah. Well reduced, so we're going to get our butter, mm -hmm. and we're going to add it in gradually and incorporate it into the sauce. And that is the key, the cold butter into this, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah, it? yeah, cold salted butter. Lovely. So it doesn't crack. Well, the colour of it too is just isn't really it? good, yeah. So we're going to add some whole grain mustard in. The mustard and the haddock uh, works really well, doesn't Isn't it? Isn't it? And yeah. The egg. yeah. So Gorgeous. that's your sauce done. Oh my God, it's beautiful. So we're taking out our haddock and that was just gently poached for about six minutes and they're ready now. That looks so beautiful, so it does. So this is our cannon. Oh wow, that looks delicious. Lots of butter in that as well, Nevin. Oh, Key to everything. Yum. So look, I'm using a ring here, but okay. you know at home you can just do an it or do scoop. anything. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I love the way you describe this as something comforting. Yes. Like a comfort dish. That comfort great. dish, exactly. Yeah, like so then we've got our egg and it's poached okay. here. And then we have our sauce. It's gorgeous. And then there that we have it. That looks beautiful. Thank you. Can I taste it? Of course you can. I know that. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Now, look at that. Your beautiful soft egg. I've died and gone to heaven. I love that kind of a dish. You got so much flavour, that lovely creamy Kulkanen, that lovely buttery sauce, the soft egg, and that lovely natural smoked haddock. Sinead, you cooked two beautiful dishes. Thank you so much. Gorgeous. Thank you so much.
It's time to take a quick break from the great food in West Cork and I've come to Baltimore to take a ferry to Cape Clear Island, which lies eight miles off the coast. Brendan Cottrell's family has provided ferry services to Cape Clear for almost a hundred years and this is a new boat designed to take visitors out to the Fastnet Rock. We got this boat last November so it has really changed around our business. So. This is our rudder, uh, our rudder ferry here, uh, all round ferry to, uh, to the island. So this ferry runs all year round, carries all the supplies and all the cargo for the islanders. Okay. So yeah, so that she'll be on all winter now. So anything the island needs, that ferry will take it. So Brendan, tell me about the different trips you provide. Yeah, well, uh, this vessel uh, primarily uh, we operate out of uh, Skull uh, during the summer months. It was bought really for the Facet Rock uh, lighthouse tours because the boat is so uh, compatible with the weather. So uh, Cape Clear is like the gateway to the Fastnet, so we bring people into Cape Clear Island, you get a few hours in Cape Clear Island, and then we bring you out around the famous Fastnet Rock Lighthouse. Okay. The Fastnet Rock Lighthouse, tallest and widest rock lighthouse in Ireland and the UK, known as the Teardrop of Ireland, because it was the last thing the immigrant ships saw when they were going to America. So, and uh, it was the last light that the people on the ill-fated Titanic saw oh. the, of, uh, of mainland Ireland. Now, Nevin, here we are arriving in uh, North Harbour in Cape Clear Island. So this is the main harbour in the island, so uh, it's where all the ferry and all the uh, yachts and everything tie up. Brendan, many people did you say now live in the island? There's 120 people living here all year round, and then in the summer that's boosted up. We have Irish colleges and stuff here, and uh, obviously holiday homes, so it increases quite a lot. So during the summer it's much busier? Much busier, and uh, we have a new marina here that was put in about five or six years ago, and um, so a lot of visiting yachts, so that's a big boost to the island. In, in this the is beautiful. Months. Yeah, it's lovely now as you oh, come in. Yeah, really yeah. Is. So. But there's some beautiful walks on the island. Uh, there's uh, the old uh, lighthouse uh, that was built to mark the Facet Rock originally. You've got a lovely picturesque South Harbour. There's a petting farm, so, and there's a beautiful beach here in the harbour. So there's loads of stuff to do. Now, Nevin, cup on tea. Thank you so much. Beautiful. <sighs> Cheers. Brendan, that was very special. Uh, it's a lovely trip. There's so. just a calmness here. It's just the, the scenery coming out here is just magical. Look at that. Look at that, uh, Chris Eddie. It's beautiful. If you want to get away from the, the hustle bustle of mainland, come out here and relax and enjoy the walks. Back on the mainland and back to Clonakilty. This is the Bacon Emporium, run by the Howbold family, who originally came from Germany. It's a bustling artisan bakery filled with traditional Irish and continental breads, cakes and pastries with many of the familiar favourites on sale here as you'd expect. But this bakery also makes and sells something you don't see very often in Ireland. Pretzels. Bjorn, thank you so much for having me here. I've always wanted to see how a pretzel is made. What is a pretzel? A pretzel is a special bread from the southern part of Germany. They are very proud of the knotted bread. You need a special technique to roll it and fold it into the typical shape. And after it will be dipped in a special liquid and baked and ready as a pretzel. Yeah. Normally, we always start with the flour. So we need 3,400 gram okay. of baker's flour. So oh, if I you do that. scale ingredients, you always have to be very precise. Yes. It's different than in the kitchen. You might add a pinch of salt I know. extra. Not here. Not here. <laughs> Not here at all. So now we add our salt. Mm -hmm. And just it's, a regular salt, is it? It's just, just yeah. regular salt. So okay. we use 70 grams of salt. Then we use our Irish butter. And is it important to have the butter soft, like it's warm in here at room temperature? Yes, okay. room temperature okay. is, is always better. Then we add our malt. Malt. That's just pure malt, is it? Just pure malt, if you want. Mm. It's very aromatic. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that gives a special taste I, to the pretzel. I've never, I've never used that before. No, no it's very no, common it's in first. Germany. So this is your fresh yeast here. Fresh yeast, exactly. I know a lot of people at home would use the dry yeast, but the fresh yeast is probably easier to use and better. Do you it's think? It's better for commercial mm. baking. Yeah. So we will be adding 120 grams. Lovely. If you see the yeast is like this, very nice yes. and crumbly, and a bit moist, you can touch mm -hmm. it if you want. Yeah, just yeah. Just crumble in a bit. You want more in there? Yeah, just a tiny bit. Now you tell me now. I don't want ruining your recipe. Yeah, I will say stop. <laughs> a bit more, keep on going. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's it. Okay. We just have to add water and put it into the mixer. 
The dry ingredients are mixed with water to form a soft dough, which Bjorn then cuts into identical sized pieces, ready to be rolled. First, we have to make them a bit round to yeah, bring some like tension that. into yes. the dough. Okay. So the best thing is, is, don't use your hands like this. Yes. Use them like that. Okay. And you have to, exactly. Okay. And you just press them down mm -hmm. and roll them gently. Yeah. Yeah. And they will be coming round. Your nails have to scratch. Okay. Nails. Okay. And the dough feels different in your yeah. hands too. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. That's better. Perfect. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll get a job. So. All right. We take two, press them a bit down, fold it halfway. Press it, flip them over, and roll them a bit long. Okay, so press. Press down. down like that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Over yeah. to the middle, yeah. Press them again. Press them again like that. Yeah. And then roll them like that. Roll them a bit long, yeah. Like that. And is wood important? Like you have a lovely counter here. You would have a hard time on the steel oh, bench. Okay, oh. wood is better. Okay. Wood is uh, perfect. Now we start the shaping. Mm -hmm. First, we always roll from the middle yeah. to the outside. Mm -hmm. And you don't add any more flour or anything like that? No, otherwise it will get hard to roll, even on the wooden bench. Okay. I start with that one now. Mm -hmm. And same. From the inside oh. to the outside. Wow. That you get a nice belly. So really thin here. Yeah, okay. that's what we want. Then we take it. And that's the pretzel. Now That's uh, good enough. Sure, okay. Yeah. So you take the arms. The arms, yeah. One twist. One let twist them down. Like that. We might have you come in on Saturday to do a few hundred, huh? <laughs> I need a lot of practice at yeah. this. Yeah. Now we are ready with the pretzels so far. They will go into the prover now, which have a high temperature, around 30 degrees, and uh, quite a high humidity. Normally we set the humidity between 70 and 80 okay. percent. They will stay in the prover for, let's say, around 15 minutes because it's very warm today. And straight after the proving process, we transfer them into the freezer, so they will be easier to handle later. All right. Wow, they look good. Just out of the freezer. OK. So we have to work quickly now. OK. That's our dipping liquid. It's a uh, pretzel lye. It's imported from Germany. Mm -hmm. And the ingredients are a secret. A secret. OK, so, <laughs> you're the so secrets. I start dipping them now. So completely, completely in. Completely in. Count to three. Take them out and put them on the tray. Will they rise anymore when they go into the oven? Yes, they will. Okay. They will. I, I always thought they were egg wash, but there's no egg in this. Oh, no. You could okay. do some, some sweet okay. version okay. with egg wash, but not the traditional one. Okay. Okay. Now we give them a nice cut Yes. just here. What's the reason we're making the incision with the knife? Just that they will crack open. They look a bit nicer, the contrast. We just sprinkle a bit mm -hmm. of salt where the cut is. Now we put them straight into the oven. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. How long in the oven now? 10 to 12 minutes. A lot of stages in this. It is, yeah. Fantastic. That's true. I can't wait to taste them now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Nevin. They Ready look. they are, fresh from the oven after 12 minutes of baking. God, they look amazing. But I love the way they opened up with the knife and then it the little bit of salt. It looks very nice, huh? Indeed. So do you just eat them like this? Is yeah, that what just, you do? Like they're lovely and soft. Just you can pull see them that. apart. Yeah. Got a lovely, savoury, salty kind of... Yeah. Uh, and very fluffy, huh? Very fluffy. Yeah. Not heavy. Not heavy, no. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks Seeing for coming. Seeing all the stages, all the effort, you know, from rolling it, shaping it, proving it, freezing yeah. it, dipping it. Wow. Fantastic. No problem. Delicious. Thanks Great for work. coming in, Adam. Pleasure. I'm ending my Clonakilty food trails at the Fernhill House Hotel, which is owned by the O'Neill family. The hotel's gardens are part of the West Cork Garden Trail and were designed by acclaimed Irish landscape designer, Mary Reynolds. Head chef Lucas invited me into the hotel's kitchen garden to cook a rack of quality assured local lamb with puy lentils, aubergine, shallots and a red wine jus. First of all, we're gonna get some olive oil. Lovely. Salt. Can you crack some pepper? Of course you will. Please? Absolutely. The really good tip is always have the lamb at room temperature. Yes. You know. Yes, you have to take it yeah. out like an at least an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, it depends what the size of the lamb. Okay. Uh, good hot pan. Good hot pan. Yeah. Excellent. Maybe five minutes both sides. 
yeah. and then take it out, leave it to rest. And you're doing a kind of fat side down, is it? Yes. Now we're going to do some courgettes and aubergine. Can I get some herbs? Look at this. Please? I love the way you've tied that. Thyme, yeah, we're going to use that as a brush. And of course, it's all from your garden here. Of course it is. Super. I see a lot of people doing this uh, when they're barbecuing. Yes, kind of yeah, that's all, that's all the flavour. It's very so, clever. Yeah, and all natural, so you know. That's lovely. So good hot griddle pan. Yes, exactly. Lovely. Olive oil, mm -hmm. some sea salt. And that's it, just nice and simple. Yes, all the flavours. So Lucas, that's a full rack of lamb that you just cut in half. That's right, yeah. And the chine bone, as I say, has been removed. Is that right? Yes, that's okay. right. Yeah. Very good, very good. Right, so now we're going to concentrate on maybe pui lentil salad. Oh, yeah. So now. we need to get some chorizo. And now we can concentrate on the red wine yes. and shallot jus. Lovely. One shallot, okay? Uh, maybe one more. One more. I'll go with Perfect. Two, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So the shallot is chopped. Yes. Lovely. Okay, so red wine. Red wine. Not too much. Reduce it down. I'm going to add some more beautiful gravy. So all the lamp is ready. I'm going to take it out for rest for a few okay, minutes. Okay, I'll make some room for you. It smells amazing. Look at that. I love the colour, you know, the caramelisation you've got yes, there. the flavours. Look at that. And some butter. If you're like me, I love the butter. Oh, yes. That's and the oil, it's a great combination. I'm going to concentrate now on the pui lentil salad. Okay. So I'm going to sweat off our chorizo. So with this one, we're going to need some lemon zest. Yes. Garlic zest. Yes. Dill and mint, please. Wow. Here's the grater. Thank you. Okay. Any amount of lovely herbs here. Pui lentils now. Okay. And we turn it off just to make it warm. We don't need to. And some mint, yeah? Mint. Lovely. Please, yeah. And of course, mint and rosemary, they all work really well with lamb. Got our lemon zest. And this is going into the lentils? That's going to go into the lentils salad, yeah. Oh. So squeeze lemon juice yeah. in there. Some there. Oh, well done. I love the way you've got the colour on the chorizo. That's gorgeous. Some salt. Maybe Happy. some bit of olive oil. Olive oil, of course. That, yeah. Yep, here we go. Thank you. So I think we can plate up now the okay. our lamb dish. Excellent. Put the courgettes. Your grill veg. Exactly. So let's put it into salad go on top of that. Beautiful colours. Just really lovely and summery. Summery, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just beautiful. So we've got some apple and frankly gin puree. Okay. Put that on the plate as well. So obviously the apples from the orchard here, of is it? Of course, like yeah. yeah. You started making your own gin, I was told, is that true? Yes, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. There's not many things you can't do around here now, I can tell you. Yeah, multitasking, yeah. try to be like... And like apple is, new, usually it's with pork, but with lamb it's the first time I've had apple and lamb, so I'm looking forward to this. Lucas, they're like a little lamb lollipop, I call that. Yes, you know, like, exactly yeah, what they look like, yeah. Gorgeous. Four. Oh, why not? That's very generous. Two each. What? Oh. That was all for me. All right. <laughs> and your sauce. And sauce. And is that it done? That's done. That looks amazing. Thank you. My God. Can't wait to taste this. Lucas, this looks so beautiful. And a generous portion too. Oh, yeah. The lamb is so tender. Mm. That is beautiful. Full of flavour. I love the chorizo and the, in the lentils and then the applewood. It's a beautiful dish. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you very much. Nice Pleasure. To here. Great to see you. Thank you. In the next episode, my coastal food trails take me to the south of County Donegal and some great seafood in Killybegs. A masterclass in making tomato chutney sets me up perfectly for a trip to Chanpur Indian restaurant in Donegal town. At Lockes Castle, I'll taste some whiskey made in the county before joining the executive sous chef to cook a tasty recipe for duck. I hope you'll join me.